Welcome to the University of Arizona Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry Centrifugation Technical Guide. In this video, you will learn how to properly use a centrifuge to separate solid-liquid mixtures. Centrifugation is a technique that is often used to separate phases of different densities. Here is an example of the type of centrifuge you will be working with. As you can see, it is composed of a safety cover on the outside to prevent injury and spraying, a rotor which spins when the centrifuge is operating, and an on-off switch. Before operating the centrifuge, you must prepare your sample for centrifugation. First, always use a polypropylene centrifuge tube with a blue screw cap. Do not use a centrifuge tube with a white cap as they tend to break easily and never use glass test tubes. Check the cap of your tube for cracks or protrusions. Caps that are concave are usable, while caps that are distended or splitting should not be used. When preparing your liquid sample, add up to 10 milliliters of solution to your suitable centrifuge tube. Do not exceed this amount. Doing so can cause spills on your lab bench and in the centrifuge. If your sample volume is greater than 10 milliliters, split the volume equally among two or more tubes. Gently wipe the threads of the tube with a Kim wipe to dry them and screw the cap on carefully, ensuring a tight and secure fit. When running a centrifuge, it is very important to balance the centrifuge by weight. This is because the weights paired across the rotational axis must be very close to equal to prevent the centrifuge from vibrating and becoming damaged. Therefore, when loading your prepared samples into the centrifuge, open the lid and load the rotor such that tubes of equal weight are arranged directly opposite one another. If your centrifuge is unbalanced, it may vibrate violently and could cause damage to the machine. If this happens, simply flip the power switch back into the off position. If your samples have different compositions and cannot be split evenly between two tubes, you must create balance tubes using water. To make a balance tube, you should first place an empty centrifuge tube and beaker on the scale and press the tear button to zero out the mass. Then you can start adding your liquid. You should never add liquid to your tube while it is sitting on the scale. The mass of the water you add should be approximately the same as the mass of the sample you intend to centrifuge. Now you can add your sample and your balance tubes to the rotor. Shut the safety cover and move the toggle switch into the on position. Consult your project guide for more information on how long your sample should stay in the centrifuge. Do not touch the centrifuge while the rotor is still spinning. Wait for the rotor to come to a full stop before opening the lid. Never stop the rotor manually as this risks damaging the centrifuge and yourself. When the rotor has come to a full stop, remove your samples carefully. Take care not to shake or pull your tubes quickly as this will remix your separated sample. You will likely see a liquid layer at the top and a pellet of solid material at the bottom. Finally, use a transfer pipette to remove the top layer or supernatant from your centrifuge sample. Be sure to expel air from the pipette while it is outside of the solution to avoid remixing. Then submerge the tip down into the top layer and gently release pressure to draw the supernatant into the pipette. Repeat this process, dispensing your supernatant into a clean receiving vessel. Take care not to disturb the pellet at the bottom. You may also centrifuge two immiscible liquids such as oil and water. In this case, the hydrophobic layer may sit on top of your desired liquid. Simply lower the tip of your transfer pipette into your desired layer Draw it into the pipette and transfer it into a receiving vessel. You have now learned how to use a centrifuge to separate solid liquid mixtures. Good luck!